I'm Diana Kennedy. Um, I live in Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, I'm very much a car geek. <laughs> I grew up in California and uh, ended up moving here with my first husband uh, back in the early 90s. Um, and decided I liked it here, um, so I've stayed. I grew up in a family where um, we weren't car geeks. You know, it's, uh, I grew up on a farm. Um, my dad grew wine grapes and raisins. And um, my brother was, was into, you know, turning wrenches on cars, but he was a lot older than me. So I'd come around and try and see, what are you doing here, you know, and, uh, and I'll just wave off your bratty little sister, you know. I'll never forget growing up that I was fascinated with uh, IndyCar. I would sit by myself watching IndyCar. Nobody else in my family was watching it, but I would, you know, AJ Foyt and, and uh, uh, Mario Andretti, you know, finding it out, and I'm over there all excited about it. So, um, I don't know, I just instinctively, just, just naturally became a car geek myself. Early 2000s, um, I bought my first non-commuter car. I got a 1969 MGB. And I loved it. By way of, of buying that car, I was introduced to the local Birmingham British Motoring Club, which through that organization, my involvement in the British Car Club, uh, we used to put on a multi-mark car show, and it was the, the Birmingham British Motoring Club, the Mercedes Club, the Ferrari Club, and the Porsche Club. And because of that connection with the Porsche Club, that's how I ended up meeting my husband, Rick Tier. Posted something on Facebook. I hadn't seen him in a long time. I said, I need, I need to go see Rick Tear. I haven't seen him in forever. And uh, it took us a couple months to get our act together. We finally had that that first get together, and it from that point on, it was just it was it was us. It was absolutely us. Rick Rick is a longtime driving instructor um, and racer, and uh, raced professionally part time uh, or for a little while in uh, lots and lots of club sport racing. My first high performance driving experience that was not an autocross, he was my instructor. And the true test of a relationship is taking high performance driver education from your partner. We survived it, came through it with flying colors. I were a few tears shed that day, but by the end of the day it was great and I was absolutely hooked. I was absolutely hooked by it. One of the cars that we have is a 944 that um, was his second track car. His first track car was the 930. Um, but this, the second track car, he and his son had raced, um, done club sport racing in it until they blew the motor up in it. Once he got sick, um, basically everything kind of came to a screeching halt. Uh, and so after he passed away, um, one of the things we started doing, or his friends and I, excuse me, rather, let's start pulling everything out, let's get things cleaned up, let's get things running. Um, obviously the first thing was the 930. Um, the house we were living in, the house that he built, uh, didn't have a shop like this. Uh, this was our dream. This, sorry. Uh, the entire time we were together, we were looking for a property like this, where we could have space to put in lifts and work on cars and do the stuff that we wanted to. Um, but a lot of it was just out in the driveway, you know? And you know how it is, it's hot and melty here in the South. And, and so, you know, but he would get out there and he'd turn his wrenches and so forth. But that does put a damper on things. You know, it does make it difficult to, to, you know, want to get around to working on certain projects. I eventually got the, the 944 running as well. Mike Nail has done all the work on that pretty much. Um, and, uh, and it's a great car. It's all dialed in now. And, and every time I go out and drive it, every time I go out and drive the 930, um, it just makes me feel closer to him because did. He had such an extraordinary impact on my life. He was a he was a great human being. So. I do run into situations where it's very obvious that somebody doesn't want to get passed by a girl, you know, especially one driving a ratty looking 944 or Miata. Because I've put in the hard work and and you know, as Rick used to say, learn to drive fast in a slow car. Um, I have that ability. It is challenging, you know, um, but I will say that I think the fact that these people know me personally, um, they know what I'm capable of, they know, again, they know Rick, but even just me on my own two feet, um, 
there's, there is a lot of respect there and there has been a lot of help there. You know, there's women out here that are perfectly capable of driving these cars and not just driving these cars, but showing up at the track with a truck and a trailer and loading and unloading by ourselves and, you know, changing our old wheels and tires. Do I think that it's still kind of an uphill battle sometimes for women getting out here in it? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see more women driving. You know, we're not trying to prove a point. We're just out here to have fun like they are. And um, so it's, it's getting there. The Cayman. <laughs> so Cayman is a late addition to the family. 2014 Cayman S, and I'm not even really necessarily a fan usually of, of gray cars. Um, this is the Agate Gray, um, but just I don't know. There was something about that car that just really spoke to me. Rick really liked it too, and um, the way I came into that, we we had long since talked about. Well, if Woody ever decides to sell this car, we really need to buy that. So um, on a whim, I reached out to him, and it just so happened the timing was right, and we negotiated the deal. It went beautifully. That is a completely separate beast. The 930 is, is just as raw and visceral, and there's no ABS, there's no traction control, there's no power steering, okay? And it is a race car. You know, it's just the way that this car is built, it's, it's absolutely built for speed. I'm try, I, I probably need to get a radar detector for it or something, I don't know, but it just, it's, it's very challenging to, to keep it in, in uh, in a calm, respectful manner. You hit a turn in this thing and it's just, it's on rails. Um, you know, again, if you have, if you have the RPMs up, that torque curve is there and you go to get back on the gas, like all that power is there. When, when the turbo kicks in, that boost is just the most incredible feeling you've ever experienced in your life. And the, and the coolest thing about it is, this is 80s technology. You know, you, you can't even compare these two. This is still the better car. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the Cayman. And it's got all the creature comforts and it's got the bells and the whistles and the heat and cooled seats and the stereo system and lots of power. And I can I can be in interstate traffic and six gear in this and pull out and not have to drop a gear to pass somebody. But this, this is insane. It's just a fast car. <laughs> what else can I say? I mean, it's incredible. It's insane. <laughs> Uh, it's not the cars, it's the people. I'm super excited about the fact that um, I am going to have an opportunity to have a place where my friends can get together, we can wrench on our cars together, I can learn stuff from people. We're all gonna line up out here and we're gonna be wrenching our cars and, and we're excited about that. And I think that's it. It's, the, it's this incredible community of people that um, are passionate about the sport, are passionate about vehicles in general. And, uh, and so it's great, you know, you, you end up with these unbelievable friendships um, that feel like family and, um, and, and it's, you know, because of what you see sitting here, you know, it's, uh, it's just a really cool experience.